You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? You know, for a second there? Yeah, I kind of did. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Kill Bill Volume 1, the film was cut in half by the production company as opposed to the cast who were cut in half by the director. Um, Mark Kermode, um, few directors have become as famous in a decade as Tarantino has. Will this extend his reputation? I just hate to say this because, you know, I was really excited about it. I really, really like Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. I thought Jackie Brown was a real step up. It was his first properly narrative film with properly developed characters. And I really wanted to like Kill Bill because it's got insane screen violence, which I like. It's very cine literate, it's very witty. It uses music from films which we all know and love. And I have to say, I thought it was bad. I thought it was poor. I thought it was disappointing, at least on first viewing. Now, there's a couple of caveats. One of them is you probably won't be able to judge it fully until we see the second half of the film, which will come out next year, because that may, if it turns out to be Citizen Kane, make sense of some of this. I don't but, have to see another one, do I? Yeah, we do. But what we have so far is something which... It, it's a real... It's, it's a step backwards. It's episodic. It doesn't have any of the kind of beautiful, looping narrative that Pulp Fiction did. It doesn't have any three-dimensional characters. It's all surface when he's proven that what he can do is depth. And I have to say that I just sat there, I mean, occasionally and staggeringly for a movie with so much action in it, I was actually rather bored. I, I was frustrated at the fact that what he wasn't doing was developing characters in the way that I think he did do in Jackie Brown. And he was just throwing a bunch of his movie geek references at the audience. And I felt like, come on, Quentin, you're older and better and wiser and more grown up than this. And I understand that the lads' audience may absolutely love it, but I have to say I was surprised by how retrograde it was and depressed by the end of it. Ian Hislop, um, we often say films are violent. This really is. I checked in the history books and I think The Hundred Years' War had a slightly lower body count <laughs> than, um, than this film. Does he justify the violence in any way? No, I mean, it's an entirely witless and babyish film in which he um, tries to kill and chop up lots of people, usually um, uh, watching women suffering, which seems to be one of the, without getting too earnest about it, one of the worst things about the film, is it seems to be a rather pervy film um, in which um, Tarantino gets the girls to fight a lot. I mean, just before the film, there was a trailer of a deodorant advert, and even that was martial arts. And after about a minute and a half, I was bored of the deodorant ad. By the time the end of Kill Bill came, I was screaming with boredom. It's a totally dismal film. In the old days, Michael Winner used to... He'd set up a really unpleasant act against a woman and spend the rest of the film with someone killing people. And that was supposed to be a moral justification. And in those days, we all said, ''Oh, Michael Winner, isn't he awful?'' Now Tarantino does something equally pathetic and morally suspect. We all say, ''What a genius!'' But the it is, it you, is you rubbish. Have, you have to be cool and Californian rather than driving round Holland Park <laughs> in a large Rolls Royce, I yeah, think. No, just, no, Michael it's Winner, just never, Michael Winner never made a great film. Nobody ever said, ''You know that Michael Winner, he's really going to change the face of Look, cinema.'' I, I, and that's the... You know, that's the I was the, in a full cinema at the Empire Leicester Square and someone had said, you know, it's going to be funny. There were no laughs. There were hundreds of lads there looking at the film thinking, oh, what happens now? They, they clapped when the word Tarantino came up at the beginning. They yeah. didn't clap at the end. Now, Bonnie Greer, Ian Hislop has put the feminist attack on this film. It's you, what I'm here for. Do, 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 you, do, you, do you share it? No, I think it's a deeply feminist film, and I think it's a masterpiece <laughs> as well. Unlike uh, Mark, I wasn't... How is it feminist? What, wh women can go around the world no, killing lots of I people think as well. it, I think the conceit of the film, which I think is fantastic, is Uma Thurman is Clint Eastwood in The Man With No Name. I mean, she's holding this masculine pose, and she takes this whole rule of the samurai all the way through this film, absolutely. Which I think is very, very wonderful. And, and Lucy Liu as a Lee Van Cleef. I mean, that's amusing, but it's also quite radical because what he does is take the other side of the feminine, the dark side, and puts it in foregrounds it constantly. The other reason why I think it's a masterpiece, and I wasn't looking forward to this, I, in fact, I, I'm not really a big Tarantino fan, in every shot, he not only references, as you say, the movies that he likes, mm. but he also puts himself in, in, in the way that every great cinema maker does. He's constantly referring back to films that you know, so that as you're looking, well, as I was looking at the movie, I'm not only looking at it, That's but the remembering. That's a description of a man disappearing up his own. Fundament. No, it's not. Why? It's Why not. No, be it's in no, the it's not. It is interesting because you're making the movie, Ian, as you're looking at it. If you want to sit isn't that and look. But the director's job. Look, also. No, it is not. If you want to sit and look at a flat. Really that film that's telling you a story. Did you, you really get all theater. these references, though? Because many of them are quite obscure. No, absolutely. Kung Partly Fu if you've had an uh, American childhood in the 60s and 70s, you yeah, get yeah. that last note. Yeah. Silly rabbit trick to for kids. The first shot when he goes into Vivica Fox's house. 
And it's, it's, well, I think it's just, hang on, wait a minute, is it's distributed. It's distributed. Can, can, it's not it's not amusing it is the fact that this woman this happens in hospital this woman was violated in a coma mm. by a man who came in another man paid another guy to yeah, do this I saw the film. she did she deals with that she's not a victim she's never a victim in this movie now, hang it's, on it's i want to ask about this scene because yes. as you say there is this um we're, we're led to believe there's going to be a rape of a comatose woman in a hospital where then we get this sequence in which her head is several times mm. smashed in a door, which is one of the most but horrifying no, things I saw, and I looked away. Now, now, what is the that's point the best of that scene? scene the best, Mark? No, that's well, two things. That's the best scene in the film. Firstly, Why? I, I'll explain it. Firstly, I think you're absolutely right about the sexual politics. I have no problem with the sexual politics of the film. I'm just, I'm just disappointed that nothing happened other than it having, you know, those characters. And I don't think it did anything with them. That sequence in which there is actual pain involved, in which somebody gets their head smashed in, you know, in a door, and I did exactly the same as you did. I winced and I looked away, and I thought that is how you direct a scene of violence. Exactly. Remember, you know, in Reservoir Dogs, when the camera actually looked away from the ear slicing, that was a great moment. The problem with the rest of the film is that the rest of it is entirely comic book and, Mark, and, and uh, insubstantial Mark, and doesn't isn't, mean isn't anything. isn't the convention of the kind of cinema that he's making? That anime, that Japanese. Yeah, there are no characters. Exactly, there is. But that's so he's why, holding that all the way through. But that's why through. I find it uninteresting. That's exactly why it, I find it, it uninteresting. It's interesting because of the poise, the poise that he's using in well, because start he's to start to make the films Absolutely. when he was younger. He can recreate the dullness of he's those things okay. later. Look, we're going to have to move. Right. I just want to ask you: There's going to be a second volume of this in February. Yes. Seriously, go around. Would you all go and see Absolutely. another hundred yes. minutes? I, I, I will go and see this again in the hope Absolutely. that it will be better, and I will see the second volume. But so far, it sucks for me. Is there a psychiatrist in the house? Would you go and see it in? No, God, no. I would, <laughs> and go see it as well. Well, we have four volumes of conversation tonight, and end of our <laughs> volume one, Kill Bill, Quentin Tarantino's volume one, starting with 18, opened in London today. The rest of the country waits until next Friday.